That Ben Crine is alive to tell his story tonight is nothing short of a miracle. At one stage, Ben was so close to death, he was given the last rites. A flesh-eating bug caught on a surfing trip north of Australia was ravaging his body. But then, when hope seemed lost, he was saved by the power of his family's love, especially the courage of his mum. Alex Cullen reports. The old saying, you know, that only a surfer knows the feeling, and you can ask any surfer. It's just something about being in the ocean. And there's so many times I sort of, you could call cheating death, or you could say coming close to death, but that's kind of how I like to live my life. Not so long ago, life was pretty damn good for Ben Cryan. He was about to start a new job and had just bought his first home. The 33-year-old civil engineer was riding the crest of a wave. Everyone loves Ben. He's fun. He loves life. You know, there was a beautiful comment I read on Facebook about Ben, and it said half the world loves Ben, the other half just haven't met him yet. Ben was an avid surfer. In January last year, the destination was a speck of an island called Pompeii, 3,000 kilometres north of Cairns. Oh, how beautiful is that? Oh, wow. It's a powerful surf spot. Um, I knew it was relatively dangerous. Not everyone survived Pompeii's jagged coral reef unscathed. But on January 21 last year, Ben was pumped. Yeah! This one wave came and I still remember taking off on it and, and riding it and I was riding it and I was, I was on it for quite a while and it was, it was a big wave and it was standing up and I pulled into the barrel and, and that was the end of it. I just remember diving into the wave and it, it, it sucked me up and, and threw me down into the into the reef and and I, I, I landed straight on my on my bum. I thought I'd snapped my back. I thought I'd broken my back. It was 20 minutes from shore. The razor sharp coral had slashed him badly. By the time they got me back to the, the surf camp, that's when I started blanking out, and that's when things started getting a bit a bit dodgy. Ben's mates took him to the island's only hospital. None of them knew how serious things were, but back in Melbourne, his dad did. Dad went into typical dad mode and he, he panicked. Um, and as it turned out, he, he saved my life. He, um, you know, he organised straight away for, uh, for me to be evacuated from the island. At any cost, we were going to get him out. He's our boy. I remember taxiing back out the runway and, and just as we took off down the runway, that's basically when I completely blanked out and, um, and then I woke up three months later. He was being medevaced to Melbourne, but an hour off the Queensland coast, Ben went into septic shock. His organs were shutting down. The flight doctor requested an emergency landing in Cairns. The coral puncture had caused a deadly skin-eating infection called necrotizing fasciitis. What did the doctors say to you? They said he's, he's very, very critical and there's a very good chance he won't survive this. He's, he's got a, a flesh-eating bug we have to operate and we don't know how far it's gone. Hang in there, mate. Surgeons operated through the night to stop the infection spreading. It's a little bit like gangrene, and it basically the surgeons just have to cut it out. That's the only way you can get rid of it out of your body. It, it eats all your flesh. Every day he was in there fighting and still hanging on, we couldn't give up, because he was fighting more than we were. As Ben lay critically ill, worse was to come. A Category 5 cyclone, the worst kind, was approaching the city. Every patient in the hospital, including Ben, had to be evacuated. It's a dangerous exercise, a very dangerous exercise, to be transferring such a critically ill person. The sickest bloke in the hospital. Easily. He was airlifted to Brisbane. It would be three more months before he woke from his coma. Describe that moment when he woke up. It was in Brisbane, and the first time he opened his eyes when I walked in, and he had a tear roll down his cheek. <laughs> that was very special. 
And what did you say to him? Welcome back. <laughs> On his 32nd birthday, Ben was flown to the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. I remember Mum and I being at the Alfred and we actually looked up at the intensive care sign and we kind of smiled to each other and we thought, thank God those days are over for us. And that night we received a call uh, from the ward to say that he was suffering seizures. Four days later, he suffered bleeding on the brain and then a stroke the possibility of brain damage was too much for the crying family. Peter suffered a minor heart attack. I was on a bed in an emergency downstairs and Jackie had passed out on the floor in the intensive care waiting room. Um, she was in, a, in a, a fetal position crying because of Ben. You know, this was just out of the blue, this, this thing. That was a, just a horrific night, a horrific night. My body was so sick all over, it really was shutting down everywhere and you fix one problem and you, and you create another problem. You're doing pretty well, have another little bit. And they're still a little bit at a time. But slowly, Ben began to pull through. So too, his dad. It's a pretty lonely place at night time, laying in your hospital bed when everyone goes home and the, the place quietens down. and. But for me, I used to get excited. I, I sort of would wake up and it, it would still be dark in my room and, and there'd be this, this big silhouette sitting next to my bed and, and, you know, and I just knew it was Dad. And uh, he'd sit there with me for an hour or so and as soon as he knew I was OK, he'd, he'd go home, so, you know. And then, I don't know, sorry. That's, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was really special to have that um, family support. Hello. <laughs> How are you feeling? Shit house. <laughs> it was very difficult for me, you know, they told me a lot of things that I, I wouldn't be able to do again. Um, one of the worst ones was after I had my stroke, they said, uh, we don't think you'll probably be able to walk again. Um, and if you do walk, it'll, it'll most likely be with sticks. Um, and you know, that just, that just tore me apart when they said that. And um, you know, six weeks later, I thought, oh, good, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk. And I just, that's when I got out of my bed for the first time. You know, I was a bit, bit shaky on the legs. Oh, <gasps> oh, no way. Small steps became big steps. Good work, Ben. How's that feel like? Ben got out of bed, then out of hospital. The doctors told me, Oh, a few months ago now that uh, I potentially um, I'd lost all my coordination and I couldn't see. Um, what I wanted to show you, this is my training. Um, and they also, they also told me that I'd never walk again. And this is what I say to them. Hang on, Ben. <laughs> Come on, Dad, keep up. I can't. <laughs> At last. Ben's body started to recover. Everything except his kidneys. G'day, Ben. How you going? Hey, Jackie. Hi, Alex. How are you? Good. How are you? So Not this bad. is it, mate. This is it. This is where it all happens. <laughs> it's our second home. 18 hours a week. It is, yeah. We're so just, how does... Yeah? We were just talking. Um, we've probably been here for a year now, so that's probably... What's that? 150, 150. dialysis sessions laid in this room, so... Without that kidney, you can't you can't live a normal life. You you know you're bound bound to dialysis. I can't drink. You know I miss my water so much. I've, I've been thirsty now for for 18 months. You need a new kidney. <laughs> you got one? <laughs> I know someone who does. Oh, yeah, so do I. <laughs> Easiest decision ever. Very easy decision. I, it wasn't even a decision. I didn't even have to think about it. Why? He's my son. <laughs> to give him his life back. Do you think I can have a glass of wine today? No way. <laughs> as long as you look after this little thing. A day out from the transplant and the Cryans are celebrating what should be Ben's last operation. Can I say a couple of real quick words? Yeah. Thank you for looking after me. And Thanks. here's to better times from tomorrow. This is Absolutely. it, mate. This a new is beginning. It. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Right. Don't cry, Mum, either. Huh? Um, 
Yeah. You're right. And now here we are about to do it, so. Yeah, it's it's a new life for Ben. Yeah, well, we hope, don't we? Mm. It's a very special gift what you're giving him. Operation number 31. 31. 31. See you with a new kidney. Thank you. So now this is the hard part, the waiting. Yeah, the wait begins. We just got to hope that everything's going to be OK. Mother and son are being operated on in adjoining theatres. Jackie's operation is the more delicate of the two. It will take five hours to remove and prepare her kidney, then placed in Ben. It's going to be the longest 12 hours for my dad and I. Nothing will go wrong. OK. After long hours of keyhole surgery, Jackie's kidney is ready for Ben. OK, well, so this is the kidney which has been flushed out. We've had a little look at it. It looks pretty good. So now we've just got to take it next door and do a little bit of work on it to get it ready. And then we'll be putting it back in. All right, so now we'll bring our kidney over to the patient. And hopefully we've made the space big enough for it to fit. The kidney going in right now will mean a whole new life for Ben. It is unbelievable. I have to say, it's only in the last week when everyone started asking me about it that I've started thinking, what if his body doesn't take the kidney, if it rejects it? And that's my biggest fear, because if Ben's body doesn't accept a kidney and he's on dialysis for the rest of his life, I don't know how we'll face that. Alex. How are you, Ben? I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> so what are they saying about Mum? Are they saying she's a bit sick still? No, no, she said they... I think they seem to think she's really good. Yeah? Um, she's come through it really well. Really? Well, unfortunately, I haven't been able to see her yet, but... Really? Um, I spoke to her on the phone. Well, um, you haven't been able to see her yet, but I think she's here now. Is she? She's right there. Oh, oh Mum. <laughs> Hi, matey. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Come here. Let it's you not know. a while now. It's too sore. Oh, Mum. Thank you. How you doing? I feel amazing. Oh, I don't. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sore, but I'm I'm good. I've woken up kind of now. I'm sore, but I'm just. Mm. Yeah, you look quite comfy. I am. Kidney's working okay, all right? Yeah. I told you it would. I was just so looking forward to seeing Ben regaining his life. Well, I'm calling it K2. That's my kidney too from Mum. So there's obviously a special bond now. There's, it's, a, it's more than just a mother and, and son that will be there forever. Mm -hmm.